table to see your comments. Uh, ben, so maybe do you want to just give everybody a brief explanation of what you've been working on? Yeah, so um, with the setup that I have now, and I'm, I got it ready to show you guys, unfortunately, I blew, blew the fuse in my uh, one new multimeter, so I won't be able oh. to show you the current on it. But if you can take my word for it, the current is being maintained on both ends. And I've double checked, I've triple checked everything. There's really no way that you can set up the multimeters to be inaccurate at this point because channel A and channel B aren't even connected, right? right. They're sitting on top of each other in a bundle, but they're not actually connected. Yeah, they're isolated. Right. So, I mean, you know, there's still some part of the back of my brain saying, you know, like I, I got to be missing something or I'm not understanding something, but all the numbers seem to be checking out. The coil's doing exactly what everybody says it does. And I just can't believe that this isn't like all over the fucking news. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if you've got to, oops. Yeah, if you've got something set up, we can um, put you on. If you want to do a show your setup, Ben, I can highlight your screen if you want. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, disconnect uh, a couple of. So, Ben, what is that? A POE? Oh, we lost your audio. Oh, Ben, we lost your audio. We can't hear you. Uh oh. Well. Australia. Yeah. Yep, that's yep. better. Back. Sorry, I had to disconnect the, the studio. Oh, nice. Can uh, you yeah. see that? Yeah, so that was a turn my laptop. Yeah, it looks like a POE. Yeah, it's a POE coil based off of the nice. design of Erica and Daniel Nunez of First Stop Energies. And Amazing. it's all color coordinated so you can see the, uh, the channels here. Channel A is red in, out is black, channel B is yellow and green and that's going to like a custom circuit that i have a little rectifier and a dc motor and it's also got a couple of uh three led lights so it's powering a load while it's doing this it's doing actual work all right that's awesome and uh i see you, you got a metal ball here, that's amazing yeah, at a kilohertz, i was getting about 3.5 volts on the input 0.15 amps on the input and on the output, I was getting six one volts and 0.2 amps on the output. That's 113% gain. There you go. Right? I mean, it's tiny increments. It's, it's you know, like, but it's a proof of concept that this stuff works. Yeah, it's it, over, uh, over unity is fact. Right. And nature does it all the time. So to discredit yeah. that is, is kind of ridiculous. But uh, yeah. um, I have the neodymium sphere set up. I'm going to show you the low end frequency. Yeah, I want to see it spin. Is it going to spin or? Yeah, it's going to spin like nothing. Here we go. Oh, look at that. It, we're at four hertz right now. I haven't even touched it. So, so you and again, uh, like, like uh, I, I forget his name, but uh, like you said, it could be running and running and running and it won't get hot. Yeah, look. Yeah, you like can't see it. Try it again. Oh yeah, see. Right. Yeah. So you got a spinning field there. Yep. Yeah. So that's um that's four hertz. And if I take out my magnetic pull detector, we can see if we can detect a pull. But I wasn't able to detect one except that very high uh gain. Yeah, that's the zero point. It's just following the field going in a circle. Right. If you put more voltage and more current, that ball should be spinning around and around and around. Right. Yeah, the 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 correct frequency and in, in input. Yeah. Here's five hertz. It's going a little bit faster. Yeah. Yeah, if you speed it up even faster, it should go all the way around. Right. Yeah. See, that's it's, it wants to synchronize. See, it's wanting to synchronize with the field, but it's I haven't achieved it quite yet. Now, I've seen somebody do a similar experiment with that. Hold um, the magnetic ball in a cup about two feet away and it's still spinning. 
that's see when you, you capture the magnetic no, magnetic moment you've reached magnetic synchronicity and you can do mm -hmm. that you can get it uh synchronized with the vortex field and then take right. it outside like 15 yeah. feet and it'll still affect it and it will still affect it yeah Yep, and you can even power down the coil and you can see it's still affecting it for a little bit of time because you know the coil right. it kind of stores energy it, it that's yeah. what it seems like cool and now right if on. i let's bust out the tone generator we got a tone generator here i'm gonna put it on 800 oh oh that's a little bit too fast <laughs> yeah baby it almost flew off the table <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, I, every step of the way, this coil has surprised me. That's the same with you. And we're getting 3.6 volts on the output. Let's take a look at the input. Try slowing down the pulse rate. 2.3 volts on the input. Can you see that? Uh, take off the uh, the light on it. Oh, take off the light? Yeah, take off the light. Yeah, now we can see it. 2.350 yeah. on the input. That's voltage. Yeah. And you got 3.638 on the output. Yep. There you go. Yep. And it's powering a load. And I, I wanted to make sure it's, you know, how would, I wanted to see how it would affect the DC and the AC at the same time. So, you know, I kind of split the circuit a little bit, but um, yeah. it didn't seem to affect it at all. <laughs> That's so awesome, man. Yeah, I like the duct tape. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I did yep. notice that without the capacitor, um, it kind of stops and you have to re-jump it. So the signal's kind of yeah. jumpy. Yeah, you have to give it some capacitance. It doesn't have enough capacitance in the coil to uh, drive it. So yeah, a capacitor definitely will help. It's, it's incredible. Like this coil, and, and it wasn't that hard to do. You know, it took some time but i think almost any engineer could whip up one of these yeah is that the rotating coil it's yeah the yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be putting... yeah it's it's I based on rodin's math but it's so i'm gonna be putting out a comprehensive uh text guide this weekend and then a, a yeah, demo video a... to go along with it that's isn't awesome. daniel Nunes' his work based on the rodin coil Yes. So yeah, okay. Daniel and Erica Nunez of First Stop Energies was uh they pretty much perfected this coil and they were open sourcing it, but their mistake was they tried to patent it. And ever since then they kind of went yeah. off the circuit. I haven't heard yeah. from them. Right? I deleted all their uh, videos. Been able to find any information on them. Yeah, like literally yeah, all their videos, all of their were, videos taken were taken down off of YouTube. Down. And I yeah. know they were taken uh, down off of YouTube. The patent means that it's not open source. If it's got patent, it's not open source. Well, they were. No, they, they patented a version of it, but they were showing people how to set this up. Yep. They were selling yep. kits, is what they were doing. Yep. But they had a version of this coil that was patented. You can go online; it's the patent's still pending. It's not yeah. called the POE somebody... coil. I can send you the link, but yeah, it, it's got some too. weird name. But it's basically the same design. Didn't somebody take them the coil? Or like, to yeah, they're wrong person. Yeah, like, yeah I yeah. wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't yeah, doubt yeah. it. Yeah. That's that what they do. Happens when you find something, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, they'll go after you financially. They'll tie you up yeah. in court, and they'll basically try to bankrupt you. Is what they're going to do. Right, right. That's, that's of, why I'm not interested in that, making money. I just want to study yeah, it. I just want to study the science yeah. and, and maybe have people yeah. replicate this. I'm so broke, I got two nickels to rub together. <laughs> Open let them come after me. I don't care. <laughs> so I'm gonna run this coil a little a bit, and then we're gonna do it. Uh, um. Temperature test. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, yes, please. That, that, I, highlight yeah, I want to see studio. what's happening in the middle this of that This is coil. amazing stuff. I'm stoked. Like, I've been trying Even to find anything. Even if it's a few degrees, that shows up because you're, you're only. Well, yeah, because you're only using like 2.3 volts, right? You're not using much voltage. So you might get yeah. a, a degree or two <clears> changing. <throat> but, you know, if you got it up over 25 volts going in, you might seem. Uh, some more dramatic uh, temperature uh, changes, right? Yeah, so I like try to, to try step to it up. Don't be don't moment. be afraid. Well, the yeah, thing is don't with be afraid. Stereo receiver, it's an, it's an old stereo receiver, so I think it's shutting off because the energy coming back in is just too much for it. Like it's 
it's multiplying the energy it's going like a, and then coming back and shutting it down if i go too high on the gain yeah it's feeding back it's a feedback yeah. you, you need it's to like use a resistors. feedback loop yeah you need to use resistors on your your feedback like your uh, ground from your poe back okay. Your stereo, if you use resistors, those resistors are going to heat up, but you'll be able to sustain your uh, output. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I could try that for the next version of the system. Yeah. Make sure you keep those resistors cold because they could melt. Heat. Yeah. yeah. What, well, what ohms are we talking about? Going it, right? Like, he's not putting too much. Like, an amp's not. It's not going to melt. Well, no, no. Go. I'm saying if he's going at higher potentials, like if he's hitting right. like yeah. you know, five at the, That's what I mean. You never know, right? You get that surge from an output on a POE, it could melt some shit. Yeah. If you're pulsing, if you're pulsing, you can control right. the heat with your pulse rate. Yeah, to a point, to a point. Yeah. It all all depends on the, uh, uh, what do you call the, well, the resistance in the coil. You know, uh, have you tested how many ohms resistance that coil is? So, actually, I haven't looked at the resistance looks, yet. Looking but, at it, um, it's going to be ohms. less efficient than uh, the Nunez design, specifically because I screwed up the bundle. When when you're bundling the wire, you want it to be uniform, and unfortunately, I didn't tighten it enough when I was twisting the wires together. So, there's a couple of spaces where the wires kind of like jump. Yeah. up a little bit and aren't connect like aren't uh packed together so that i i suspect is affecting the system yeah. in some way a hundred percent uh bob green here states with like the exact same thing with his windings as keshi and the magrav all, all of them that uh you have to have that same consistency throughout in the uh spin to maintain the field unity of the geometrics of it yeah, right. that, yeah. That feel unity is because of the, the skin effect. Each additional line actually multiplies the one after it. That's why you have to get it really tight. Right. So they have to be like compacted. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that all makes sense because you're, you're taking two counter rotating magnetic fields and you're compressing them on top of each other in such a way that, that you right. create that singularity. Yeah. And you have to follow it to their uniform. Uh, path otherwise it, it doesn't quite work well right and uh there are um there's specifically a more advanced version of the poe coil before they went silent but, um what? and what they did was basically they just made the the openings on the coil frame very thin v-shaped so that you can only fit one wire at a time but you're fitting them on top of each other so they're perfectly symmetrically in a line right and that seemed to, they claimed that that version was that so advanced, well. right, that it, it it didn't produce any O3, which is a common right, it problem. It cancels out. You get identical signals cancel each other. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> you have to have different, flow, different flow rates of current as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm also seeing that because, you know, you don't really get to know and understand these systems until you work with them. You know, theory can only bring you so far. But I'm starting to see that the that the rodent coil has multiple resonant frequencies. There's one on the lower end and one on the higher end. And on the lower end, it has a strong electromagnetic field. And on the higher end, it seems to produce tiny amounts of overunity, at least in my system. Yeah, start uh, start playing with higher voltages. I do have um because <laughs> they do recommend a, a HV capacitor. Um, I'm not sure if my coil yeah high is voltage, but yeah, it's supposed to output high voltage, and it does this. Uh, the secret uh, to their design is is the method that they use is an open circuit system. Yeah. Where, um, open they loop. Use, yeah, an open, open loop, loop, and it, it, I guess it yeah. leaves room for it to resonate more in the cavity. Yeah, well, the open part is when the when the transistor's gate is open. That's the open part of this of the pulse. So you have a pulse. There's an on and an off. During the right. off portion of this loop is mm. the portion they're call, they're calling the open part. Right. So it's off. So it's that is it not portion like is when the system? flyback occurs because it is During being closed off. by the load. Uh, the, the, when you close the gate, you create a load. The coil is to load. 
Yeah, yeah, but when you close the gate, you're connecting the, I see. the other okay. end of the battery to the coil. Mike, this is the you're charging. It. You're that talking makes sense. conventional systems, though. The PoE and, and systems that uh, <laughs> me and, and it's a pulse. Bernie it's a pulse system, right? That you're using here. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulsing, pulsing it with AC. So, so there's so there's an on and off. During the off, the coil inverts its polarity. Understood, but they're dynamic systems. They're not just one coil, one transistor. Do you know what I mean? They work as yeah, yeah. Like, they're two. The bipolar. I know one one direction, yeah. one back the other. I get back the other way. I get you. So yeah. you're how saying you phrase that again, uh, benefactor? Two fields in a uh, and and how do you you just said the. The, the specified, uh, you, you, you described. Oh, two counter rotating accurately. magnetic fields compressed. Right. There you go. Yeah. Two counter rotating magnetic fields. That's exactly right. That's the pinch. Right. And, and it's, it's, it's this, the secret is when you combine the resonance with the geometry. And that's, you know, if you look at the Tesla coil, he had the resonance right on that coil to maximize the voltage, but he wasn't choosing the path of least resistance for his coils. Absolutely. So when you combine the two, I believe you can achieve over unity. Uh, I think well, that Tesla was, hard coil, maybe. <clears throat> I think Tesla was using a path of least resistance, but he kept it hidden from the public. Yeah, it, that's patents, very true. If you look at his patents, they were inverted and they were upside down. So they, that's really, right. I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah like his down. Tesla coil is actually a receiver. Wow. Reverse yep. it. Right. If you if you oh, use the yeah. uh, secondary as a primary, you can actually step down the power, and it's that's it's right. very interesting. Tesla. Yeah, amazing. and when you when you see because that right. that explains why he used high voltage when it went to the second coil because it's in harmonic resonance with the with the uh, first Tesla coil. It's going to harmonically resonate at the same frequency and the same voltage. So. The primary coil, a coil, which is usually what triggers the secondary, he now made that into the step down transformer. So, absolutely. And then there's a and, spark gap in there for regulating the frequency. Right. We'll grab my thermometer. Yeah. Do you mean uh, the secondary so, was a step down? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah when you reverse it, that's yeah. hard to believe. No, not at all. It's a transformer, Mike. It's just oh, wait, he was stepping down. What, 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 was, what was he stepping down? Super high. Okay. Voltage? Yeah. So okay, you got the, get, you I have to okay, listen. Okay. You got the first Tesla coil. That's your transmitter. Okay. Yeah, no, I get it now. You're shipping down super high voltage into the secondary. You, then right. You, you just the okay. Primary. So my question to you is this: What happens when you step down from a high voltage to a low voltage? You gain what an amp. You, you convert voltage. To exactly. Amps. Exactly. You don't lose anything. You convert everything. Nothing. That's lost. right. Now you're Unless creating horsepower. Now you're creating Mr. horsepower. Steve. Now you're creating horsepower with the second coil. It's <clears> not. It's not physically yeah. connected to the first coil. So therefore, there's no draw off the first coil. It's just doing its okay. thing, right? Hmm. So what you're is saying now is actually one of the secrets to the Wardenclyffe Tower. Now think about that, because yeah. radio frequencies are only voltage. There's no current. So that's if you right. Could literally. Well, that all depends the on the duty cycle of the radio frequency. If you could that collect the radio on. frequency on the secondary of a Tesla coil and step it down through the primary, just like Mike yeah. was driving, you now have a free energy system through the radio. There you wave. go. Well, way over unit. Right. Uh, Gerald, by, by the way, radio frequencies don't have much current because their duty cycle is very narrow. They don't need there. it. You just need to collect that well, right. They don't need it. They ground. just need the, they just need the pulses to, for the sound wave. Right? Yeah, and when you when you send it to the ground, you literally collect it as it's flowing through to but, the but ground. That, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you can't send radio signals with a wider uh, duty cycle and transmit amps. Yeah, true. You don't, you need, don't to. need to. You, well, that that yeah, you don't need to because as soon as you're stepping it down, that's where your gains happen. You know, yeah, yeah. if you're collecting high frequency, high voltage uh, radio signals and stepping it down to a low voltage, uh, huge signal, then you, right? You you got got yeah, because that spark gap is what regulates right. the frequency, right? Exactly, Mike. Yeah, the ohms That's is right. doing something real crazy. Look at that. I put it on the ohm setting. You could have an intermittent short, or I don't know if you're. Is your device 
it's on if your device is on shut it off just right. do it with uh it just with the, uh, meter yeah shut your uh coil off only way to, the only way to measure the the resistance of the coil benefactor is you have to have it disconnected from the circuit oh, yeah I that's see. right okay yeah, there we disconnect, go disconnect uh Okay, so you got what is uh, three point at least one end has to be disconnected from the yeah. Surface, then you can measure. Was that? I'm a layman still, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, three point seven yeah. ohms, right? Yeah, three point seven. That's low. All learning live. What is that? Eighteen gauge or fifteen yeah, so gauge? You, so so yeah, that's good. No, you have very. Great. I love having this. I love having you guys here to help yeah. me and and, and explain nice some person. of the things so, that I'm I'm seeing. So so three point seven ohms. 3.7 ohms that means you have a very little uh resistance in that coil that's a good thing but enough to create a draw enough to create flow that's cool yeah no. as long as you have as long as you have a little bit of resistance in there or inductance hmm. right you can increase the inductance by actually putting a metal core in the middle of the donut but you you don't want that you want to create that zero point in the middle right so even though even though that your uh, ohms resistance of the coil is low, as long as you got a bit there, it's going to draw current into the system. Oh, so you're saying there, there will be a, a little bit of uh, resistance is necessary for that energy to transfer? Sure. Yes. To a point. To a point. Now you could go. Well, let's say you got five ohms and a hundred and what is your voltage? Twelve volts? Fourteen? It was uh, no, like he's three a, point something on the output. Yeah, he's do. Yeah, he's. Oh, yeah, he's. You know, what's your voltage. source? What are you feeding? Him? Oh, yeah, the source is. A stereo at receiver, it was reading, I think, 1.6 going in. Volts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to use a low voltage. Oh, so, so you get so Ohm's law is V over I times R. I is your current, R is your resistance. And if your resistance is three ohms and your volts is 1.5, 1.5 divided by three ohms would give you your current. Hold on, got a calculator. <laughs> 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 it's a 500 milliamps that's half an amp so, so half an amp going through it 1.5 so divided by three ohms yep so you got a half amp current going through that coil but well, hold on hold on don't don't think that's watts that's amps so that's amps. half an amp yeah 0. 0.5 times the uh, volts uh, volts times amps is your watts yeah times uh times uh 1. how 5. many six six volts output you said Oh yeah, yeah. What's your 0. 0.5? What's it your was one point six on the input Vol and three point. Out. It was like three okay, point. Okay, so out, but three point six. That is yes. how many feet 1. in that coil? Do you know? One point one point eight watts is your output, and your input wattage is um, volts times amps is so one point five times point five is point seven. Five watts, uh, less the qu three quarters of a watt is your input, and you're getting a like, uh, uh, like, you know, two and a half times that out. That seems consistent yeah. with what I was reading when the yeah. actual multimeter yeah. was reading the current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and it's, it's yeah, consistently yeah, exactly. one to two ratio on the uh, voltage. I haven't really been able to break that except for as you tune it. You're getting you're getting you're getting just. It's not enough to run itself, but if you right, had, exactly, if yeah. If you had yeah. more than twice, it would run yeah. itself, and then you'd have that extra for free. So, do you know how long your coil is? Like, how many feet? So, uh, when I wound it, I stretched it out to fifty feet, and I, you know, did the winds twenty-four times for you know twenty-four wires. But um, okay. it didn't actually use that much. I had a lot left over, so I'm guessing maybe thirty feet, thirty-five feet. Okay. Do, do, do you think you can scale it up by changing some parameters? Of uh, like, uh, do, do you think if you if you enlarge it or uh, use a stronger magnets or whatever, do you think you can uh, you can you can have it three times it, more he, more power or something? He like can, that? yeah, he can increase his output if he finds a better. Um, uh, location where the signal is more in tune with his device, like somewhere right. else on the planet, you know, where there's and, a different uh, uh, resonance going on with the device. It's um, can you walk it around a little bit and see? I what think happens? size has a um something to do with it, but I think it mostly is how many times you wind it around the coil because different winds yeah. supposedly have different effects. You can take is it like grounded. 
uh, I'm sorry. Is it earth grounded somehow? No, no, I don't have it grounded to the earth. Mm. I'm in an apartment. <laughs> that would be the first thing I'd do. And you could no. even ground no white tray. You could even ground it to your uh, stove. The oh stove yeah, has the British, yeah. Sorry, right, to the like checking the polarity, the side that you want to ground it to. Mm -hmm. try to. Try to find out what the, what the polarity is of that end that you're going to give it ground, mm -hmm. and then and then give it a, a diode in, in, that 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 is in fashion with that polarity. That oh, to direction. force it through that that uh, that direction. Yeah, or or, or vice versa, or vice depending versa. on what you're trying to do. Right. Yeah, so, no, that's it, if it works, well, man, if it works well, I'll be your first. Because otherwise, otherwise, whatever's going on, it's going to go back and forth. You know, you're not going to have it going one direction, and that's not what you want. You want, you want it to go go into your battery, not back into the ground. Right. <laughs> so I got a question. My first setup, I, I had a feedback loop where it wasn't actually outputting any usable energy, but it was regis registering, you know, a high, high voltage output. You said you had <laughs> two resonant frequencies, one lower, one higher. Was one of your frequencies 157.5 hertz? 157.5. <laughs> Somewhere around there. So What happened, G? <laughs> that hurts. Tell me. So um, Did your foot uh, twitch? Anything? No, beyond... no. It's because the okay, length yeah. of this question in comparison to his ohms <laughs> anything <laughs> yeah anything between okay. like 600 hertz to three kilohertz is kind of the range at where you see the over unity effect but it's it's really tunes in like closer to one kilohertz it's almost like eight it's like 800 hertz i think is the highest we got um 124 percent awesome yeah because the faster your frequency is the more the more uh you're sending through the device right but too and, uh, fast it just takes a dump and you see it like it it just flattens out on the output and you get less output which is what you're supposed to get right. according to conventional science right. so every every device has a certain amount of current it can deal with before it it's not running off now just, now another uh, thing you might want to try is do you have a metal core as you're doing the experiment put your core slowly into the center of it mm. and see you know by creating more inductance in the coil well your gains go higher there might be a sweet spot where you can drop that um, uh, metal core down to a certain point and it'll give you a maximum yes output. we were just think just enough yeah we were just thinking that uh the other night when we were doing i had some friends over running some experiments and and my friend mentioned that like we should have like a stable platform that we can measure right the, the distance from the vortex to determine the, the optimal height and and that right. will be ideal for a rotary motor because if you're only yeah. outputting one mo like it, regardless of if the south uh the north pole actually exists somewhere if you're only outputting one pole that's really affecting the system that's ideal right. for for driving a magnetic motor yeah yeah and uh something that actually happened to me that scared the shit out of me was um i was i you know those little disc magnets i had a stack yeah. of them and uh, I had them in the cup and I was slowly increasing the frequency one hertz at a time. And I noticed it was, you know, it wasn't jumping around. It was just vibrating. And then it just started making yep. a noise. That's good. That's good. Yeah, you're, and, hitting, you're hitting a harmonic. Is that the harmonic yeah. for the magnet? Well, the actual, <laughs> the, the actual, the actual field. You're, oh, for the, the field. field it's built, yeah, the field itself. Yeah. So what, what happened though, and I can't explain this and maybe somebody knows what happened but i took one disc off of the stack i had the stack in my hand i put the yeah. one disc in the cup and it didn't do anything so i took it out and i got it too close and it snapped back and it made a bright yellow flash like a small one but right on the contact point where the two magnets met it made a yeah. like a small bright yellow flash i can't explain what the fuck happened no 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 magnets will do that if they hit each other really hard you will create an arc so it, it was holding it or it was holding an electric charge well you know no, that's you got, it's, when, fair, it's iron no if you got two like you know dimmy magnets and they hit each other really hard yeah they'll create a they spark break. and break they can break. yeah they will break yeah so i mean they've snapped together before and not not made a flash maybe the coil had something to do with that could be um all i know is you know dimiums are pretty well known for that if they hit each other hard enough 
mm. with enough force, they will create a spark. They that scared don't, the don't, crap out of me. Yeah, don't yeah. keep your fingers between them because yeah, you don't yeah, them. yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So uh, that that being said, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with this coil, and uh, I'm really yeah. I just uh, all I all I say is try to increase the inductance of that coil. Try with the core, you know, mm. putting it in slowly. And uh, don't be afraid to go with higher voltage. Try to go higher voltage. Yeah, when I get a uh, when I get um, a more safe setup, I'll definitely do that. Right now, it's not exactly you can you can do you can do higher voltage safely through a coil that has higher impedance, higher resistance, so a thinner cage. Yeah, and then yeah, you you'll go higher. Yeah, up. but I don't I think it wants power supply that can supply enough power. Yeah. <laughs> well, you no, know, no, no. I mean the voltage, not power. The voltage. You're not. You're not sending amps. You're just sending voltage into it. Well, you can control the voltage with it too. But I mean, it, it can send a lot more voltage the, the coil, than my stereo coil, receiver can. If the coil has a higher resistance, it won't allow the amps, but it will allow the voltage. Yeah. No. So you're saying the amps will kind of stay at the same current flow. A higher resistive coil will allow you put like uh, let's say 100 volts through a high resistance coil. And you 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 got like a hundred amp battery behind that hundred volts. Well, the visit so like the coil. Let's say the coil is a five hundred ohm coil. Um, five hundred divided by uh, volts divided by resistance. So hundred volts divided by five hundred gives you a two a point two. Which is 200 milliamps. No, is that 200, 200 milliamps? Yeah, 200 milliamps. 200 milliamps. So what, how are you going to burn something with 200 milliamps? Yeah. The only time I would start worrying is if you go over but, but, the, but the voltage got through. But with that voltage, it was only that's because of the resistance the coil had. You see, so. That makes sense, though. That, make, that does make sense. And... Uh, the way that I uh, kind of confirmed that it was actually accurate is because my my multimeter is brand new. Ah, it's only rated go. to 250 milliamps, right? So, mm -hmm. and it was at 260. <laughs> right. So, so, yeah, I, so I knew you, I know it was you about that, that it, amount of current. Yeah, go, so okay. using a thinner gauge winding uh, is not going to – you can step up the voltage safely, no problem. Okay. Know. Yeah, maybe maybe the next uh, frame that I wind will be a thinner you know, um, wire. The, the power supply doesn't need to be a high amp power supply, but it needs to have a high voltage. Ah. Like you could use a low a low amp rated uh, variac mm -hmm. and put a diode on it to get your high voltage. Let's see a little so, more. Yeah, no, my, my power Please? supply, I think, is rated for uh, – 50 volts 50 volts but um but only it's not going to shut off if yeah it's not going to shut off if more than that or uh it, it's not going to shut yeah. off if 50 volts come back into it but the receiver does <laughs> you mean from the flyback is there right the exactly thing? yeah the, the receiver is shutting down out, out after a certain power well you can shunt output. the flyback you can shunt shunt the flyback to a battery capture it into a battery so it doesn't hit your power supply at all no, that's smart. Yeah, I could do that. I could look up that. No, that's that that's the Bedini SG. You said method. use you said use resistors um on the the back channel. Uh, to... Well, you could even put diode, a diode. You, you could put a diode, there. or you know what, you could get an LED light, hook up uh the back spike right to that, and it'll just dump into the light so it doesn't hit your uh yeah, power LED supply also. and blow it. Well, yeah, LED you, might be a little see, small. You'll see when it you go out. Because uh, that's what I right. dump my circuit no, into is a regular household LED. Yeah. At how many, how many times cir did you wind that one? This oh, Gerald. Oh, yeah, Gerald. That was uh, 750 feet one way and 750 feet the other way. Jesus, Five pilot. That's yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a yeah I spent some time on that. Yeah. Uh, 22 on the primary, 23 on the secondary, or maybe yeah, reverse that. I'd have to look at my note. It's been a while. That's a, that's a lot of beef. <laughs> yeah, it does some really crazy stuff. I could get, depending on my circuit, I, I could 
can pull 2100 volts out of the secondary with like 24 volts input on the primary it's mm. it's insane it's dangerous yeah that's crazy yeah yeah that is crazy I, i'm gonna do all those demos very shortly i just my life i gotta i don't have funding this is all from like this copper here for this coil came out of the back of old tube tvs <laughs> <laughs> hey, I understand, oh man. I'm, I'm out of an apartment right now. I'm doing these experiences. <laughs> yeah, so it's like I do what I can when I can, right? So I work right, a job, I right. do renovations, get up it's enough real money, science. buy it's... stuff, do experiments. So, Th yeah, that's so how you know it's hard. real most if people, it's not funded people... by others, right? My God. So exactly. Right. 20 right. gauge, right, Joe? 20 gauge. But most people they'll work their entire day and then come home and be tired. But 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 us, we push it. We just constantly push it because we're we're trying to to actually use our limited free time for this stuff. And it's very time consuming. It is. It is. Um just in case anyone's wondering, that's the homes on that. Is that considered pretty good for that yeah, size? That's of like oil? a that's like a 16 size, or 18 yeah. gauge. Right. No, it's not 18. It's got to be 20 or 22 or 23. Those are the only uh, uh, gauges I was working with back was then. Was that two pounds? And, uh, maybe two and a half, give or okay. take, without the ferrite cores. Right. At that gauge, you'd get that kind of ohms. So what, what do those cores do around the outside? They pick up voltage on the outside and they light these LEDs. These LEDs that are on them are in series. They're picking the oh, they're pickup coils. Okay. Yeah. They're pick up picking the flyback, well, right? So listen to this. Uh, according to uh, some of the videos that I've been uh, watching uh, regarding First Stop Energy's uh, tutorials and demos, um, they actually have, have uh, their main coil. And the, their smaller coil, you can put it on top, and it'll transmit wirelessly the, the electricity um, if you put it just by setting it on top of the, the other coil without any power going into the secondary coil. So and if you spin a magnetic motor above the primary driving coil, you, uh, depending on what number of winds you have in the secondary coil, you can set it on top, and it will decelerate or accelerate the spinning of the magnetic motor. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, that actually, awesome. I have the same effect. A little different than what yours is because I understand. Yeah, anyone who's looked, anyone who's messed around in the lab has seen how energy transfers itself and never loses itself. It right, transfers. and the closer you get that path, the more you'll see these weird things happen. <laughs> yep, yep. Like I can light all these LEDs and pull like 16 volts out of every um full wave bridge rectifier mm -hmm. after putting 12 volts into the primary yeah but my just secondary yeah and but my secondary will have a um super fast diode with a small capacitor bank attached to it see even that so, with disregarding the current even transforming the or the the voltage like that with a one-to-one -one ratio coil is is supposed to be impossible right supposed to be but this is based <laughs> on geometrical form i don't See here. Well, no, thing. it's a one-to-one -one ratio of turns, but not the same gauge, and that means the resistance is different, and the flow rate of current through the two of them is also different. Oh, so there's two different gauge wires. You got to keep that in mind. Yeah. The resistance. Uh, difference so point. Difference in resistance means difference in in pr pressure valves, the uh, pressure chamber difference. Yeah, but that has chambers. nothing to. D I agree with you, Mike, but you're talking. The second it's so minute that no, it's it not a very important count. factor here. Yeah, but it can't account for the anomalies I'm seeing. Yeah, well, when you have two ones that are the same gauge, same resistance, symmetric, you know, then they they cancel. Even if you wind them the opposite direction, um, they cancel. Yeah, but because I I believe you're correct when it comes to solenoid coils. No, they don't but cancel. Don't they si they simulate they simulate a cancellation. But what you're seeing is just one signal, not two, because it's two identical signals. But you, you're no, only going to see one. The, it's actually the because same right. signal that's inversed. If you you can invert it right, but you, will you see it with your right. meter? No, because your meter is not designed to read that. But I, I do see 
see it though, Mike. That's what I mean. There's a way of seeing it. I've been playing with this for 12 years, dude. I right, know about this stuff you know, in my sleep. I'm <laughs> telling you. I just haven't I haven't released everything that I know. Because it's very but having difficult. two different flow rates. There's a lot of naysayers. Yeah, out you there. talk about this shit with everyday people, and they think you're crazy. Half. <laughs> yeah, and even and if there's an electrician or an electrician pressure in the room, voltage. forget it because he's got this thing stuck up his ass about the the right. three law thermal dynamics. Yeah, you can't break the, the law thermal law. Thermal dynamics does well, until not we apply. unite the fun gravity with the other fundamental forces of nature, I think we were missing a key concept here. <laughs> well, but see, but that's the thing when you're talking about. Well, you're Einstein. creating eddy currents with two flow rates. I mean, that's the important thing to understand here. Those eddy currents are what is going to give you the excess. Oh, so so what, is, what is an eddy current? Can you? So much more. Can you? Well, an eddy uh, current is created when you have two oppo two different flow rates, with different so pressures. Mike, Mike, that creates eddy current. effect comes in into into effect the dichotron instability comes into effect there skin so effect many is the eddy current it's the same term it's the same thing it's skin effect and eddy so it's like a pressure is, differential it's not actually but the, the eddy currents cold. are happening on the skin of the wire that's what yes not oh okay wire. it's the same thing hmm. it's the same thing not cool. that's it's very it's impressive your head back. I like that. Well, like I Christian, Mike, it's it's not the Mike, skin. It's the skin of, of two wires that are wrapped around each other in, in, Mike, in, the, in the flow yeah. in two different directions. And they're in you're two great. different You're pressures. my friend, but I got to ask you something. Are you an electrician? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. That's all I need. <laughs> no, brother. <laughs> the other one's a 50 amp breaker. It's kind of look at it like that, you know? You can allow two nothing like that, nothing like that at all. What you're talking about are <clears throat> linear forms of hopper. This is non linear, this creates spin. Yeah. It's a totally different dynamic. Totally. Well, well that's what Eddie, that's what Eddie I made mean, this is. one, and it doesn't just to compare it, it doesn't produce the same effects, obviously, but it's like my control. Oh yeah, yeah, I get that. Here I'll get. Yeah, so it's just a regular coil. It doesn't really do anything compared to these coils. Right, you're inducing a high rate of any current formation, you know, through that uh, method. But um, I, I will say that color coordinating the coil uh, leads did help me out quite a bit when uh, trying to hook it up because it can it can get kind of confusing. <laughs> Opposite ro yeah, uh, rotating magnetic fields, opposing or opposing. The PoE is difficult to wire. It is. I, I made one once. Yeah. It, it's 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 a little yeah. bit of a process, but I mean, I think I've learned a couple of tricks that I can you know teach everybody, and hopefully you all can make one, and we can all like Absolutely. have these results. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> or ver or verify or review them. You know, like that's what I'm looking for. And like it's a three phase. Correct? You said what? It's phase the poe uh it's a bifiler bifiler two like three yeah wires. Two, it's two channels two, uh, no, three. two okay no so it's two channels so it's got it's got 20 channel. it's got a bundle of no it's a single wires. it's two wires in series so it's like a two phase but uh but uh but they're wrapped around each other so it's like uh, one phase with two directions. The PoE four. Yeah, it's it's really weird. So it's a it's a bundle of twenty four wires, and then you're taking twelve of those wires and putting them in series for channel A, and then the other twelve in series for channel B. The best way to describe it is you're okay. sending current from left to right clockwise, and then right to left counterclockwise through the same wires, two wires mm -hmm. that are in series, and they're different in resistance. They're not symmetrical, or at least that's how I understand it. I mean, it's or really hard to get them symmetrical if you're if that's what you're looking for. But there are, are you trying to theories. get it symmetrical? No, there no. are theories that depending on how uh, symmetrical the the outputs are, the leads themselves, like having them different lengths, could have different effect. So on the next uh, on the next coil, I do want to make the the output leads the same length. You know, just to to see see well, just that. changing, just yeah. having them the same length does, and having different gauges does not make them symmetrical. It makes them asymmetrical. They're not the same size or the same. No, shape. no, no, the same the same length. No, that, that doesn't make them symmetrical because they're not the same uh, mass and they're not the same resistance and all of that. 
Well, it might have some effect. At, at the very least, it'll. Keep oh, I mean, having a symmetry, having symmetry is is a way of canceling out your signal. Even you can put it 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, it's just like a way of uh, taking noise and silencing it. Like well, it makes sense two. that what you're saying because it, now that I think about it, what you're doing is you're putting the wires in series and creating a big bump right there. It's an inverted and, circuit. It's an inversion circuit. And that, kind of yeah. And that doesn't really seem to affect the efficiency of all of the systems. Sym symmetry is a way of inverting, you know, you can create symmetry, but, in, you know, inverted symmetry, and then you cancel out a signal and all that. Or you're not really oh, it's probably it. you're more about it. the, It's probably more about the uniformity of the bundle itself then. <clears throat> yeah, but what I'm then, saying but is the bifiler is two windings, but they're not the same thickness. They're two different cages, right? I mean, no, but you want, you want that system to be asymmetrical. You don't want it symmetrical. Oh, okay. I didn't know. That. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You want it to be asymmetrical for uh, having yeah. the uh, the harmonic resonance take effect. Yeah. No, maybe mine is asymmetrical. It is kind of bent. What, <laughs> what I'm saying it's like you're sending a, 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 a current with a certain amount of uh, milliamps, which creates the the note A, for instance, the musical note A, and then you double that. Uh, you you give the, that uh, milliamps. You multiply it by an octave. And you have the same A, but at a higher pitch. Let's say you don't do that, and you just create the, uh, the a C, which is a, a resonance to the A. So the C is, let's say, that 600 milliamps. So you got 200 milliamps going through the biofiler on the first line, going from left to right, and you got 600 milliamps coming back the other way, going from right to left. That's a pressure differential. That's where the uh, I think this over unity is taking in, in, in that kind of a system. You know, that could I'm, that I'm could be that right. could be. I, I mean, uh, over, if you. Over, if you look at asymmetrical systems, though, uh, they seem to be they seem to be prominent in physics. Yeah, <laughs> they create they create a harmony or or, or a melody. Right. It's all that's the only way you get over unity is an asymmetrical system. A symmetrical system will cancel itself out. Right, symmetrical that's, is like having makes a, a lower a and a higher a. That's symmetry. That makes sense. So so what you're saying is my system is probably asymmetrical. In yeah. some way. Even Tom Bearden. Right. Tom Bearden talked about this. It uh, has to a be. Lot. has to be asymmetrical. If you look at the Thane no, Heinz this, device. This gives a lot of course, new data. Course. My research. That, right? I, I need to rethink things. A lot of key <laughs> points. I was thinking it's all about the symmetry, right. but maybe it's the lack of symmetry. Like even From Bearden what I said too, is uh, non-equilibrium. That's basically what he's saying. As long as your right. system is non-equilibrium you'll get the over unity effect as soon as you get uh you have to break the symmetry yeah yeah you, you have to break, you have to break yes. the symmetry those are his that's words right. break the symmetry that's his yeah, but he's talking about he, breaking he, the symmetry of the circuit, not, not the coil the coil yeah. is a separate animal the coil is a part of the circuit it's so you're saying whole even, thing. even if it's the same gauge size and, and length and all that it could have different well, resistance break the yeah. symmetry but yeah. having not two two notes of C, but a C and a D, which resonate with each other, which they're in harmony. Right. They're yeah, not, no, this, they're not symmetrical. Two notes, than, uh, but they're in harmony. What I originally thought. I'm glad I came breaking on here. Symmetry doesn't today. doesn't mean does, breaking the have you on then. Breaking the harmony. A lot of good <laughs> yeah. key points. Definitely. Oh, well, real quick, I forgot to tell you guys. The temperature only registered a degree higher all that time we had it running it yeah. was uh the ambient was 75 and it was running uh in the vortex on the coil yeah. wire at 76. it's only a couple watts so <laughs> no what you got to reach over a thousand watts to get hot you know well 500 watts. well if you're getting the real effect of uh zero point it should be cooling down right once it starts taking in the no radiant way. energy that's right. If it's taken in the radiant energy, your core should start. Already that's what we should see. We yeah. should. And that's what Daniel yeah. Nunes described in his center of his coil is a 10, a yeah. 10 degree reduction. So I might yeah. have inefficiencies in my coil in some way, but for some reason, I'm still seeing an, an increased output. And I, I'd like everybody to, you know, try to replicate this to see if they can get the same thing. Yeah, Here's I think you're just running at too low. Too low. When you're too low. Voltage. When your coil starts to cool down, you have to give it the opposite reaction on the other side of the circuit. 
like you, sort of like breaking symmetry. So you don't have, I have to, to this, I have to show this crew this, but uh, I did an experiment where I run my coil system. I believe it was at 880 hertz. Mm. I have a small capacitor bank on the back end of my um, coil. Uh, transistor circuit i'm running it in a negative bias then i run that through a 900 watt electric element and i heat it to about half of its heat but when i'm doing that my coil cools down and i mean like almost to the touch where you touch it gets it, colder like noticeably it, colder yeah, it feels like it's burning your fingers. that's cold electricity sure. baby right so so what do you mean you're running in negative? Found, you're switching in negative? You have to have a resistance somewhere in the circuit mm. that sucks the heat while you're like as a load when you're running it. So, so okay, that makes sense. About, something to think about. Gerald, what do you mean when you say you're running in a negative bias? Does that mean you're switching the negative side on? What does that mean? Uh, okay, so the uh, coil circuit that I got from Bedini, I I mean, like, if you're running in a positive bias, what is that? Yeah, mean? yeah. So I run the negative. I go from the negative of the wall plug to my primary, and then from the um, negative part of my primary through my 2N0355. Does that make sense? Oh, so okay. You're the transistor. I'm the trying trans to follow. Bias, <laughs> you're using a PMP. Not an yeah. EPN. Yeah, I'm using gotcha. a PMP. Yeah. Which is like switching the negative. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all about how you play with the polarities, right? You're using the negative, you're using the negative potential to create your Exactly. And by doing so, I'm getting a mass amount of positive potential. See all those little so things, they add up. You can't do it with just a well, free energy it, circuit or a free I, energy coil. For the board. people listening that don't get that, let me just explain. Uh, the positive potential is like taking a plus five volts from the battery and touching the base of a transistor to get it to close the gate. You're giving it a five volt positive potential. What he's doing is he's using a, not an NPN, he's using a PNP transistor, which can read. Uh, uh, it, it senses negative voltage on the uh, emitter, if I'm not mistaken, Gerald. Is that correct? And and, yep. and the positive is still hitting the base. The other, the positive of that negative that you're giving the emitter, yeah, is still connected up. to the base of that same and uh, PNP. Absolutely. But, it's, but it's, it's getting triggered from the emitter side, not the base. Yep. Of the trans same transistor, That's the two types of transistors. That's interesting. That's uh, because if you just, put yeah. if you put a load on the positive side of that two N three five five, and you run your coil on the negative side, hmm? your potential goes through the roof on your coil I'm, end. Uh, I'm and, vaguely getting what you're describing right there. And your system runs way more efficient. It's like running a light bulb on the on the negative uh, leg or something. Exactly, but when I run it on the negative rail. I flip the polarity through my coil, turning it into okay, a Okay, so what, what, what Gerald's describing here <clears throat> is he's pulling positive energy towards his uh, negative potential device by creating it, a, giving it a negative potential through the ground, right? Through the, you said you had it connected to the ground. Yeah, my, my secondary is connected to the ground. And that's your negative potential... That's how you make the device uh, uh, having a lesser potential to the positive from the source. And, and then you're, all you're, my pickup coils just scream with that positive potential that's flipped. So, so instead of pushing the source energy into his device, he's pulling the source energy into his device from you're the, from the, it, opposite, you, from the opposite end of the circuit, not the, not the source end of the circuit, from the other end of the circuit, which is yep. the drain end. Of the circuit, right? Drain yeah, because What's think about this. Think about this. When electricity is flowing, when you flip on a light switch and you turn on that light bulb in your room, and you flip it off, that power goes back 
through the wall to source the opposite direction. Faster, it goes the opposite. Exactly. Faster than it did when you turn the light on because it has more than 10 X multiple in voltage. What's that? And also at a more than 10 X multiple in voltage. Exactly. But, See, but at and the same time, a 10, a 10 X decrease in amps. See, you're getting it, Mike. That's exactly so what I've been doing conversion. for the last 12 years. You switch voltage for amps every time you convert. You don't lose anything unless the circuit that it's being converted through has uh, uh, the they're, they're not in tune with the uh, with the uh, the volts that you're putting through and, and all that in the amps. They have to be uh, like the coil has to be rated for over. Let's say you got five amps pushing through a coil and your coil can only handle four amps. That's not going to work out. You know, your coil has no, to at least I, handle I more than five amps. Than and have it, having and hand, having a coil that only handles the five amps, which is what your source is putting in, and only handling the maximum is still not going to be good enough. You want a coil to handle 10 amps for a five amp source. And then you're not going to have any heat or any losses. Well, when I was at my max, and I, I had to shut it down because it freaked me out a little bit. There were some anomalies I won't talk about right now but when i was at my max i was pulling 1800 watts through that coil that coil at 20 gauge and 22 gauge or 22 and 23 like i said i gotta check my notes that's a pretty, that's that's a pretty thin gauge why to be doing that <laughs> i know because you know why the coil does not heat up that's 18 amps. Never, and you never know had I, I had a theory uh when we were saying amps. powering it off has a spike in voltage uh, I had a theory that that's maybe what John Searle is doing with his Searle effect generator is pulsing it on and off. Yeah, yeah collecting the back spike. The rollers are doing that. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. You guys got two secret sauce secrets tonight. Right? Folks. Huge secret sauces. Oh, this, has been great, this has been a great Learning episode. 100%. Absolutely. One of the best. Um, yeah, we got By the way, uh, we got about five minutes and then we'll square it up, all right? Sounds good. By the way, if you want to boost up your voltage while you, with the same power supply and give it the full 50 volts, just mm -hmm. put like a uh, like a 10 watt, 10,000 ohm resistor on the positive side of your power supply mm -hmm. coming out to your coil and you can turn off the voltage without sending any more amps. Oh, yeah. so the positive end of the output channel. Right. Or okay. the negative, but I don't know which will work better. It's, Kind of I can do that out. right now. I mean, I know we don't have time, but I, I'll do it for the next show. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. You can try either yeah, the positive or the negative or both. Even. <laughs> you can put, you know, can put a resistor is, on both the positive and the negative. This is real science. It's just uh, everything about this coil just blows my mind. I think Make sure those resistors can handle at least five five or, or more than what your power supply puts out and wants. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, no, I agree, Mike, totally. Because they, they will so just up. get hot and turn up. I've gone through a few of them already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the high-wattage ones, they cost like a dollar more, but they'll never burn out on you. And they'll keep using them. Yeah, the ones never that come with my Arduino kit aren't, aren't probably going to cut it. <laughs> the white ceramic ones that come out of the back of old tube TVs are like hmm. 10, 15 watts. Those are the best. If yeah. they heat up. Yeah, those are the best yeah. ones, yeah. Well, I got an HV yeah, capacitor that's 2,000 volt rated. Maybe one of you guys can show me how to hook it up to the system one day. <laughs> Maybe Absolutely. next week. Well, right? where, where are you at the same time? <laughs> oh, ben, where are you? Well, where, where are you located?